Welcome to Smartthorn Community Church's digital service. It's great that you've been able to join us today. Yeah, it's great to have you with us again. And remember, if you're joining us on Facebook, why not leave a comment so that we know you're there? Yeah, that'd be good. Um, it's good as well to see signs of spring in our garden, oh, isn't it? It is, yeah. I, I love the flowers on the slides at the beginning uh, of uh, our service. It reminds me that things are changing and that there's hope for the future and that new things are on the way. Yeah, indeed, yes. And a lot of people have been talking about hope recently. Uh -huh. um, and that includes our politicians because they've been all ta talking about the vaccination programme as being a way of life returning to normal. Mm. And I don't know if you, you remember, but Boris Johnson, when he was setting out, out our roadmap out of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, he said this, the crocus of hope is poking through the frost. I like it. I it's like a Boris it. statement. It is. Wow, yeah, I like it, yeah. yeah. And what else did he say? And he said, he went on to say, spring is on its way literally and metaphorically, hoping this is true. Yeah, you're right. I hope it's true as well. Um, but the, you know, the greatest source of hope that we can find, the greatest source of hope we can have in our lives is the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. Let me read to you a passage from the Bible, a verse from the Bible. It's Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and it says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans to give us hope. I think that's a great statement. Whatever you're going through, whatever, wherever you are in your life, God has plans to give you hope and a future. Yeah, that's an amazing verse mm, uh, and promise. And it's well, it's nearly a year, believe it, since we recorded our first digital service mm, and is. our service uh, as hosts as well. Yeah. Um, and I don't know about you, but I've really, really enjoyed uh, the contributions that have been made over this past year to our services. So thank you to everybody that's got involved. Yeah, we've had some great contributions. So we thought today we'd just revisit um, some of the services that we recorded and show just a few short clips from some of them. So we're gonna take you back, first of all, to the digital service that we recorded on the 29th of March, 2020. So Angela, tell us, how have you been coping with lockdown? Crikey, what, what a week this has been. I don't think I've ever experienced anything quite like it. And I, I suspect none of us have done. Yeah, just, it's been hard. Mm -hmm. um, hard it's to hard. cope with the, the big change, yeah. work-wise and, you know, in all of our lives. Um, and mostly I've been okay, but I have struggled a little bit at times. So I think that that's not unusual. So what, how has it been, being cooped up with me all, all, all week? That's week been there. so very difficult, I have <laughs> to say. Imagine. Um, but no, seriously, um, it's been, we're okay, aren't we? You know, we've got each other. What I do, my heart goes out to those in our church, in our community, in our country that, that live on their own, because yeah. I think that's really hard. So when you heard about the lockdown announcement on Monday night, Angela, just tell us, let us into a little secret. What was the first thing that you thought about after the lockdown announcement? That well, you the first thing that I thought about was, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to go to church. I'm sure it was. Yeah, but yeah. so the, the second thing that I thought about was, oh my goodness, how will I get my hair cut? <laughs> yeah. And actually, talking to a few people in my circle, quite a lot of people have been worried about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not unusual. Right. So, and actually, but, but I've, I've got, kind of got over that now and, yeah. and just come to terms with the fact that, yeah, hair is what it is, isn't <laughs> it? And I'm not going anywhere, so does it no. really matter? Exactly, exactly. Wow, that was interesting, seeing yeah. that clip, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. Do you think yeah. we'll look any older? No, no, definitely not. Definitely. I think we'll look younger. Maybe. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I think things have changed a bit, though, they, since they then. They have certainly changed, yeah. Another clip that we wanted to play today was one we recorded when the restrictions, the lockdown restrictions, were being lifted after the, after the, after the first lockdown. And Richard and myself visited McDonald's restaurant to celebrate the fact that takeaways had reopened. Let's see this vid clip now. It's 
So we're here at McDonald's, very excited, aren't we? Oh, yes. Oh, first oh. time in how long? How long's it been? Um, a good few months. It's felt like years. Yeah. But has. anyway, yeah, we're here. I mean, what we're going to get, what do you reckon? Yeah, good pint actually. It's a real, that's a real choice we've got to make out there. Um, Big Mac, do you think? Or... Oh, classic. Chicken yeah. legend. Yeah, um, just a maybe a cheese, straight cheeseburger. What do you think? I, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's just start small. Let's just get a, let's get a cheeseburger. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ten, please. Yeah, that's everything, thanks. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Oh, oh, come on. Right, moment of truth. This is it. This is it's it. What? Oh, oh McDonald's cheeseburger. Right, Crikey. On, Here on. we go. Mmm. Oh, that's really nice. Really missed that. Ah, oh, lovely. If Angela's watching, don't don't let him see that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, thank you, McDonald's. Mm, not sure about that. All yeah. those calories. Mm, true. <laughs> well, there are so many clips that we could have chosen and played this morning, but I think it's time for worship now, don't mm. you? Yeah. And I suppose looking back, one of the most memorable moments, if you think about our services in mm. 2020. Um, was when Lolita, Lolita Gill, our friend mm. Lolita, joined us. Mm. So we thought we'd play the video that Lolita Gill sent us um, as when she sent us one of her recordings last year. Yeah. Um, and we used it in our service last July, but we thought it was so good we'd like to revisit it. We did, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? We first met Lolita Gill uh, when, she inv when we invited her and Homegrown Worship to help us celebrate our centenary event at church. And uh, you've kept in touch with uh, Louis, haven't you? Ever I since. have, definitely, on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I've been following her on Facebook. Yes, yeah, so, so it's good to have that connection. Yeah. Uh, and it was a special moment, really, when Lolita um, agreed to sort of do nice. something specific for us as a church. Yeah. So let's listen again to that, uh, to that and worship God together. Yeah. As I'm walking on this journey I don't always know where to go So many things seem unfamiliar And I can feel lost and alone And there are shadows that are shouting
that were good. Enjoyed that. Um, you know, it's, it is good to look back, but we also want to look forward, don't we? We want to experience the God-given hope that, that we mentioned earlier and to see the plans that God has got for us for the future. It's interesting, in the book of Job, yes, we're going back to the Old Testament again. It tells us what God said to Job because of his faithfulness to God through a difficult patch. God said this, The Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. And it was that phrase that God gave him twice as much as he had before. God is a, it shows that God is a God of restoration. God is a God of blessing. And I believe that as we come out of this lockdown period, that we're going to see God restoring and God blessing us in an even greater way than he did before. Yeah, that's a great thought. So our speaker today is Pastor Paul Howells, and he's going to bring us a message of hope and encourage us to expect the unexpected. So let's go over to Paul now. Yeah. Hi, good morning everyone. It's great to be with you and uh, it's a joy to share God's word with you again this morning. Uh, uh, you may remember the last time we were together, um, I talked about bold praying, uh, adventurous praying, audacious praying, um, looking at examples from the Bible about dangerous prayers and big prayers. And um, this morning I want to add another layer onto that. And um, I want to talk about expecting the unexpected. And uh, it's all designed to prepare us, I guess, for what's in front of us in a post-pandemic world. Uh, we'll be moving into a new arena as a church, into a new space. And uh, there, may, there will be demands on us to maybe function differently and, uh, and respond to challenges that we've not faced before. And, uh, and I do think that the prayer ministry of the church will be very strategic and important as we, as we move forward. So I want us to talk about expecting the unexpected. The Bible is full of stories and we will relate to some of them uh, during this talk. Um, but I want to anchor my thoughts this morning in a couple of verses I have found in the book of Job. Job chapter 5 and verses 9 and 10. And I'll read it from the Message Bible um, because I think that translation of these verses carries some real impact. Uh, and this is what it says. Job 5, verses 9 and 10. After all, God is famous for great and unexpected acts. He does great and unsearchable, marvellous things without number. There's no end to his surprises. Uh, a smashing couple of verses, I'm sure you'll, you'll agree. Expect the unexpected. I want to start this little talk by um, referring to a, a couple that I know who live in South Wales and I've known them an awful long time. And uh, they're called Emrys and Glenys. Uh, uh, they're not exactly your modern day Gavin and Stacey, um, but Emrys and Glenys live in a small terraced house in a small little mining village in South Wales. They've lived there 52 years from when they were married and uh, it's just a two-bedroomed house and uh, in, 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 a, in a terrace, in a street. And um, Emrys worked in the local factory for a number of years uh, before he retired. The local factory was actually at the end of their road. So Every morning, Emrys would walk to work, and then at five o'clock, he would he would walk back home. Um, that was his routine. He would go to the pub twice a week on a Friday night and uh, a Sunday lunchtime. Um, Glenys worked in the local primary school before she retired. She worked there for over thirty years, and um, and uh, she too was nearby school, so she just walked to school and. And, um, and that was their world, just around their house and what they did. Uh, their, their places of employment were within close proximity. Um, they shopped in the local co-op, just again on the same street, in the local, the local convenience store. And they did their weekly shopping there. 
and uh, if they needed clothes or items of furniture then they would go five mile up the road that was a that was a day out for them and uh, they would do that two or three times a year to the, the 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 biggest town that was near to them their social circle was just uh, their neighbors and maybe one or two men that um, Emrys knew from a visit in the pub and um, I remember him telling me just a couple of years ago because uh, we went to their golden wedding anniversary and, uh, and I remember him telling me uh, just in conversation that in the 52, 50 years as it was then of married life uh, they'd only been to Cardiff four times now, Cardiff is only 30 mile away there's a, there's a train line there's a bus service and um, but that's that's the parochial living that they they uh, they had. Um, they n never really went out of their own setting. They had a very parochial mentality, a small minded view of the world. They never looked for anything different. It was all very settled. It was the same old, same old, that same cycle each week. And uh, they knew they were so predictable. You could set your clock. Um, by them and then one day they had one daughter Jennifer and uh, Jennifer a few years ago when she was in her 40s her and her husband won a sizable sum of money on the lottery and uh, it was a seven figure sum and um, she came to share her joy with her mum and dad and uh, during that conversation um, uh, she said to them that her heart, her desire, was to buy them a new house. She would like to buy them a semi-detached house, just not far from her. She lived about 10 miles away, and uh, she wanted mum and dad to up sticks and move to this new, brand new semi-detached house. She'd have a, they'd have an extra bedroom, they'd have a bigger garden, um, Emrys would have a garage, and uh, she tried to sell it. But guess what? Emrys and Glenys declined the offer. They declined the, the invitation to move into something bigger and something better because they were very settled where they were. They were in a routine. And, uh, and why, why would they think about moving into a new bigger space or something different? And, um, and when I reflected on Emrys and Glenys and, uh, and their life and particularly uh, what they told me about turning down the offer of moving into something bigger and better, um, I, I thought this serves as an illustration in some ways of maybe how churches have operated over, over, year, over the years and maybe as individuals, Christians have, have uh, lived as well. And um, where churches have just you know, they, they've just settled into a rut, they've just settled into a routine. It's that they're on a cycle, they're on like a hamster wheel, and it's the same thing all the time. They never look to break into a bigger space in God. They never look to do other things than just what they've always done. They've always done it in a certain way. They never look for any new adventure to go on uh, with God. Uh, they're conditioned to what they know and, and it's the same patterns and the same routines and um, you know for an individual it could be that their their prayer life is just the same old. It's me Jesus talked about beware of meaningless platitudes, meaningless repetitive platitudes and, uh, and uh, I guess that there are a number of Christians and a number of churches who perhaps are on that same cycle. We've always done it this way. This is, this is how the church, generation after generation, has been in this church, and this is the way we've always done it. And then new people join that church, and, and perhaps after a while they find that their spiritual aspirations uh, are, are suppressed, uh, and there's a glass ceiling, uh, and um, they can't break free from it. They want to do something different, uh, um, but because of tradition, because of culture, maybe because of denominationalism, it's, it's, it's hemmed them in and it's kept them uh, uh, living on that, that level that everybody else lives on. And uh, so that, that is a true story of Emrys and uh, Glenys, 
but it relates very much. I'm sure you'll agree. It relates very much to some churches uh, um, that, that certainly I've come across in, in my time. You probably know the story of the elephant who uh, was tied up at the back of the circus tent and uh, a great big animal, but there was just a flimsy bit of rope that was holding the elephant. Uh, uh, it was a stake in the ground and a flimsy bit of rope uh, and, uh, and the elephant would just wander around that space. He wouldn't attempt to break free and to move away. And, and uh, one day somebody was walking behind the tent and, and uh, the elephant trainer was, was with the elephant. And, and just out of curiosity, the, the gentleman says, uh, you know, don't, doesn't he ever think about breaking free? Don't you think it's a risk not to have a chain or a cage or but just that flimsy bit of rope. And of course, the trainer smiled and said, ah, we've trained him well. When he was a small little elephant, a small baby elephant, then we just tied him to a similar rope, a stake in the ground, and they knew they couldn't break free. And uh, as he's grown in size, we haven't had to change anything because he's conditioned to think in a certain way. He's conditioned to think this is how it's going to be. This, this, n nothing will ever be different. This is how it is. I've been conditioned to believe that I can't break away and break free. And again, that serves an, is an illustration of sometimes our, the, the level of our, our faith level in church and our expectancy for God to do some new things. You know, what limits are on you? What limits are on churches today? Limitations from the past. We've maybe, you know, convinced ourselves that certain things are not possible. And so we have to live at a certain level and we have to do things a, a certain way. And, and um, we, 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 we have no appetite to break into new ground uh, because we're in a spiritual rut. We, we're programmed in a certain way. But I want to challenge us this morning as we look ahead into a new landscape to expect the unexpected, to look for things that we've not seen before, to pray for things that we've not seen before. You know, I don't know what uh, Christian books you may have read during lockdown. I'm sure you've had opportunity to uh, read some books that you've been wanting to read for a while and uh, I've read some real crackers during uh, uh, lockdown. I, I uh, started last April, I, I read the book by George Muller and uh, who set up the orphanages in the West Country, of course, and, and just believed God for the provision. Didn't go asking for anything, just the only person he'd ask is God. And uh, there was this divine supply line into the orphanages uh, every day just coming in food coming from wherever and uh, all because a man and a woman were prepared to live on the sharp end and and believe God for more and uh, so I've read his books it's um, releasing the power of prayer it's called it's really good I've uh, I've also read the memoirs the journal of Evan Roberts Evan Roberts of course was a young man with a huge heart for the things of God and lived before the Welsh Revival and God prepared him and he was a coal miner and uh, you know he led other miners to, to, to the Lord underground you know he talks about in darkness underground how he brought the Jesus the light of the world to them and, and of course he was instrumental in the Welsh Revival it's a great read and then there's uh, another book I've read by William Carey William Carey went to India as a missionary he founded the Baptist movement uh, missionary movement he went to India he was there for 41 years he never came home but he's famous for famous for a number of things but he's famous for a quote that he uh, is has has made and um, and that quote you'll, you'll sometimes often find it on the in on the desk of, of a pastor or a leader in their study or maybe on the wall a plaque on the wall and and uh, it's often quoted in in leadership circles and uh, the, the, the quote is this, attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. 
attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. And uh, that's what I want to bring us this morning. I want us to give a flavour of that. Are we expecting the unexpected? Are we positioned? Are, are we conditioned to say, Lord, we are looking for more than we've currently got. We are looking for more than we had pre-lockdown. We are looking, Lord, for new things, for a fresh move of your spirit. We are looking to go beyond our boundaries. And Lord, we want to throw off the limitations that may have been placed on us or we may have placed on ourselves. Never try to figure out God. Never try to second guess God. But very often, you know, our preferences, our rationale, our low expectations uh, become the benchmark um, to which God must submit. Otherwise, we reject it. And, um, you know, that's sad uh, that uh, we've been made in God's image. And, but sometimes we want to bring God into our image and, uh, and our rationale and our standards. And, and if God doesn't come down the channel that we uh, have prepared then we, we dismiss it and, and we reject it. Uh, expect the unexpected. You know, I was thinking uh, this week when I was preparing this talk, I was thinking about how the disciples must have felt going to work every day. And uh, you might be in a job where you get up in the morning and it's not exactly something that you've got a spring in your step, but you go because it's the right thing to do. Imagine the disciples. Imagine the excitement they would have had getting out of bed in the morning and thinking, I wonder what's on the agenda today. We are going to work with the Son of God. And uh, think, of the, think of all that, that happened with them. I mean, the, the Gospels is only a little flavour of what happened. There's a lot more than that happened. And uh, you imagine them coming home from work, coming back to their family and you as a roving press reporter saying, tell me about your day. What happened today? Ah, well, we were on a boat and, and a storm blew up and then, you know, very dangerous. We were all fearful and then Jesus just calmed things down. Jesus just spoke to nature and, and reversed it. And, uh, and then we went to a, a wedding and uh, ran out of wine and, and Jesus turned the water into wine. We went to a, many a funeral and, and the deceased person would have been raised again from the dead. We met some lepers and uh, Jesus just healed them. And imagine the journal. Imagine them getting out of bed in the morning and saying, we're going to work and we don't know what we're going to face. We are expecting the unexpected because we are working with Jesus. You think of the narrative of the children of Israel. They came out of Egypt. They came out of slavery. And uh, while they were in Egypt, everywhere they looked, they were, they were gods, small g. Gods of wood and stone and metal and, and uh, gods for every imaginable event that could happen. And, uh, and they were so predictable. And then they began to go on a journey with the living God. The living God. And of course, first up, Red Sea. Opened. God just opens it up and they, they cross. Then there's manna from heaven. Then there's water from the rock. Then there's this cloud and pillar of fire and incredible things. And the gods that they grew up with, the gods that were just stationary gods, uh, Gods of wood and metal and, 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 and uh, stone. Then they encounter the living God, a supernatural God, uh, expressions of the miraculous. And, and uh, they came to expect uh, the unexpected. Uh, but very often, you know, we lean into our preconceived ideas. We will lean into what we've had in the past uh, and, uh, and, the, and, and, and what we've got accustomed to. And so we lose a sense of edge for something new and a fresh appetite for God. What are you going to do? We are expecting the unexpected because if we're honest, and sometimes this applies to leaders more than anyone else, uh, uh, our, our need for control is very evident. God's challenged me on that over the years. Uh, when I was pastoring in Scotland as a young pastor, I went to Scotland when I was 29 years of age. And, and uh, uh, within be, there being just a year or two, 
uh, there was a, this move of God that uh, people referred to as the Toronto Blessing. Some of you may have remembered it. It was a, it was a move, a global move of the Holy Spirit. And um, a lot of the apostolic churches in the UK didn't sample it, didn't, didn't experience it. And, uh, but we did in the church I was in. And um, it was very challenging because a Sunday morning, Sunday night, our midweek prayer and Bible study uh, would often be interrupted. It was very different. And, and of course, your initial reaction when you see something that you've not seen before, you see a manifestation of the Spirit uh, and um, then it's lockdown. Hmm? You know, we can't have this. And, um, you know, it, it was that was our initial approach as the I, I worked with elders who were a lot older than me and they were they were very traditional. And um, it was, you know, our our challenge, our our concept of Pentecostalism was severely challenged because we saw things of God. Uh, we saw things of the spirit that we hadn't perhaps seen before. And, I have to say, I, I, during that move, I saw the good, the bad and the ugly uh, side of things. And, um, but God changed us as a team over about six to eight weeks. And we began, to, we were praying together and we would, we would talk together about what was happening because we didn't want to, we didn't want to suppress anything. And, uh, but at the same time, we wanted to have order in the church. And... Um, but we, we saw a wonderful move of the Holy Spirit. And uh, when you see people falling in love with Jesus all over again, you can't deny that. I saw people that had been Christians for decades before I got there. And I knew them to be, you know, they were almost stereotypical if I was, if I was you know, not being unkind, but they would be stereotypical perhaps of, you know, an apostolic person and a really good good pe people but they would have a certain view of the world and a certain view of church and um, and that was challenged and the Holy Spirit came and you know to see them laughing and to see them moving in in the prophetic and to see them just bringing testimonies to the church I mean I never heard a peep out of some of them before this and then after this they came and every Sunday morning they wanted to share a story, a testimony of witness about something they witnessed to somebody or they prayed for somebody in their workplace. And uh, it was incredible and it challenged us because we didn't expect the unexpected. God was breaking out in a new way and, and we just wanted to keep the lid on things. Uh, there were some things in that move that we rejected. There were some things in that move that we corrected. And, um, but there were some things that we embraced. And uh, people today are, are, are wearing a different kind of Christianity now as a result of that move of God over 30 years ago. And uh, so we, we were challenged to position ourselves to expect the, the unexpected. And we can often miss out on a blessing in church or in, in our life because it's packaged differently. You know, think of the time maybe you've had Christmas presents and it's been, you know, a very small package and you've made your mind up before you've opened it. Oh, this didn't cost very much. And uh, how wrong you are when you open it. Uh, or maybe a big present and it turns out, a big box, and it turns out to be a very small present because the person that's delivering the present to you has, has tried to con you, has tried to have a bit of fun with you and package it differently. And uh, sometimes, you know, we miss out because God packages things differently. God is doing a new thing. God tells us in Isaiah 43 that he reminds Israel, of course, who were in deep despair at that time, who they were, but who he was. And he says, I will make a way in the sea. You know, I will annihilate the Egyptian army. But he says, as much as you want to think back on those things, don't dwell on those things. Don't focus on those things because I'm doing a new thing. In other words, God is saying, don't look for me to do things in the same way every time there are fresh expressions there are new things god is a specialist at breaking the mold and god wants to break the mold of our thinking and, our, and raise our expectancy level anticipate the unexpected expected god cannot be contained the words of solomon in first kings 
when he gives the prayer of dedication for the temple, he says, how on earth is a temple going to contain God? The heaven of heavens cannot contain him. There's no way a building of bricks and mortar is going to contain the living God. And of course, he's challenging the, the mentality of the people because the people thought that they could put God in a building. Uh, they could put God behind a curtain. Uh, and uh, what happens in the New Testament? The curtain is torn in two and uh, there's breakout. Uh, and uh, you read in Ezekiel about the river breaking through the temple and, 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 and moving into as far away from the temple as possible. All these was God on the move. Uh, and people have tried to put God in a box. People have tried to keep God in a denomination and uh, in a building. It can only happen in the building. People can only get saved in the building. People can only get healed in the building. And we become very uh, building. A mentality has been challenged with lockdown that God can do a lot more outside of the building. If, we, if our faith levels, are, are, we can engage with him. The Bible is full of stories of expecting the unexpected. Think of Elijah. He's banished to the brook. He's just brought a very damning announcement to King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And uh, there's drought in the land and, and, and God's judgment is being expressed in a strong way. And he's, he's banished to a brook and there's, he's on the sharp end of his own prayer because there's a drought and the brook is drying up. And what does God do? God feeds him with ravens. I mean, that's incredible. Ravens normally devour food. But God instructs them to deliver the food. And they bring food to the man of God at the brookside. Uh, expect the unexpected. I wonder what the church thought when Saul of Tarsus joined them. He was the greatest persecutor of the church, but God called him to become its greatest theologian. I wonder what they thought. I wonder what they thought when Barnabas took him to that first Sunday morning meeting. We didn't expect this. This man is a terrorist. This man wants to put us to death. Expect the unexpected. You know, when God wanted somebody to spread the gospel, he chose somebody who hated the gospel the most. That's what God does. God challenged the Jerusalem church, didn't he? He took them by surprise and said the gospel is not just for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles. It's going over the wall, it's going, into, in, in, it's going over the barrier, it's going to the Gentiles. Think of the lame man outside the temple in Acts chapter 3. Asking for arms, asking for money and Peter and John are on their way to a prayer meeting. He, he's asking for a handout and he got a handout all right but it was a very different handout to what he expected. Uh, Peter puts out his hand and said silver and gold have I none but such as I have. We need to expect the unexpected. The whole Easter story is about expecting the unexpected. Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, the immovable stone is moved. The unimaginable becomes imaginable. Jesus is back alive with us. The story moves on into the book of Acts. You know, Peter's in prison and the church down the road are praying for him. He's in a prison cell, they're in a prayer cell. And they are praying for his release and it happens. But when he knocks the door to tell them the good news, they couldn't believe it. I mean, in our prayer meetings, we need to expect uh, the unexpected. Uh, and right through the book of Acts, we see that story being rolled out uh, of expecting the unexpected. You see, God has given us a bigger mandate than simply to retain the status quo, folks. I believe that even now we need to start to get our spirit stirred as we look ahead. You remember in, in Isaiah, God says the barren woman was asked to sing and rejoice before she gave birth. Before she gave birth. So we need to look down the corridor of faith and expectancy and we need to start to get stirred. Looking beyond the confines of what has been and what is just familiar and seeing something different. One of the greatest doxology prayers in the Bible is Paul in Ephesians 3. Where you know, you know the, the doxology. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above even what we can ask, imagine or think. 
That's where we need to be. That's where our focus needs to be. You know, there's a, in that if chapter in if Ephesians, Paul is saying, I want you to see what you haven't seen before. I want you to know what you've not known uh, before. I want you to do what you've not done before. And they can imagine them thinking, wow, this is a, this is a, this is a tall order. But then he concludes it by saying, but our God is able. Our God is able to take us on a journey, folks. He's able to take Smallthorn on a journey that we've not been on before and to see, the unex to see and expect uh, the unexpected. God is wanting to do much more than what we've seen uh, in the past. Uh, I believe God wants Smallthorn Community Church to be a house of dreams, uh, a house of aspiration, uh, where young people are coming and they're not having their dreams suppressed or stifled by a glass ceiling of tradition or culture, but we are making dreams happen for people. We are walking young couples on a journey that will take them on an amazing adventure with God uh, because as, as the people of God, we're expecting the unexpected. We're in a good place. Uh, you know, last week I was start, sat in... Uh, in a traffic jam, it was temporary traffic lights and I was sat behind a van, a vehicle, and it was a Virgin Media van. And um, on the back of the van, they had a caption that really intrigued me. And it says, this network will take you to places you've never been. And uh, of course, like most preachers, like most leaders, you get stirred by things and you bring, you, you, give, it, you give it some spiritual credence. This network will take you where you've never been or places you've never been before. My heart is that Smallthorn Community Church becomes a hub in Castleford where we take people where they've never been before. People experience the supernatural. People see the bigness of our God, the greatness of our God. We see God opening doors. We see God doing incredible things that we've never seen before. You know, before lockdown, I uh, just a few weeks before lockdown, I last year I I was in a school assembly in Middlesbrough, and uh, before I gave my talk, there was a sketch that one of the the teachers, the year four teacher, was doing, and there was one child at one side of the room with a with a poster that says, uh, "What if I fail?" And then there was another little girl right across the other side of the hall and she too had a poster and says but what if I fly and the teacher went to the first child with what if I fail and and talked about you know what 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 we need to achieve in life the kind of attitude that we need to to succeed and we can we can wallow in failure and we can live there if we want to but then she started to cross the, the room the hall and said but We'll come away from that. If that's been in your family, it doesn't need to be you. And we'll come away, we'll come across. And of course, she arrives at the little girl with a poster who says, what if I can fly? And she says, that's the mentality that we want to instill into our children. That's the culture, the ethos of this school. We want you to, to have aspirations to fly. I want to have aspirations to fly. I want to be part of churches around the UK that says this is the way it was, but we've come into a new day. We've come onto higher ground. We are ready to fly. We are ready to go. You know, God poses the question, is there anything too hard for me? Certainly not. Billy Graham used to say, you know, if you read Isaiah 40, a marvellous chapter, fantastic chapter in the Old Testament. If you read Isaiah 40 for, for 30 consecutively, for 30 days, he said it'll transform your life. Maybe you want to buy into that. Fantastic chapter about the bigness of God and the greatness of God. God is bigger than any prayer list. God is big, bigger than any prayer agenda. Let's not look for the familiar folks. Let's reset our expectations. Let's reset our faith levels and believe God for the unexpected. Let's expect the unexpected. You know, sadly, the children of Israel through the wilderness, they had limited, they limited God. It, Psalm 78 tells us that they provoked the patience of God. They had a limited view of the Holy One of Israel. 
Let's let's take off the shackles. Let's take off the let's take away the glass ceiling. Let's expect encounters with 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 the living God. Uh, and I pray my prayer for us in Smallthorn will be that the glory of this house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Thank God for our history there. Thank God for generations who have faithfully served. Thank God for over a hundred years. Uh, of, of faithful service but we look to destiny and I pray that the glory of this new house will be greater than the glory of the former house expect the unexpected don't be like Glenis and Emrys just living in that little rut same old look to break free look to move into a bigger space in God a new adventure with God leaving behind the old and reaching for the new and the fresh and the dynamic expect the unexpected the Lord bless you today and I pray that your appetite would have, your spiritual appetite would have been whetted. And together we will go on a journey of expecting the unexpected. Bless you. Thank you, Paul, for your word. Very encouraging, very inspiring. Well, uh, let's all try to develop that faith and anticipation to expect the unexpected. Yeah, indeed. So what's happening this week then, Graham? Well, on Tuesday, with the second part of the new Bible study, um, and we're looking at people in the New Testament, and this week uh, we're looking at Mary and Martha. Very interesting characters, actually, in the Bible. Yeah, that's true. The study starts at 7.30 on Facebook and is followed by a Zoom discussion at 8pm. Yeah, so it'd be great if you could join us. We're also moving towards opening up the church so we can meet face to face, which is great. Uh, more details of that will be available very soon. And we hope to produce a short video as well about our new normal and what that's going to look like. So we just wanted to say as well that if God has spoken to you in any way mm. at all, through anything that you've seen or heard in our service this morning, or you just want to speak to someone about church and Christianity, please get in touch with us by using our dedicated email address, which is enquiries at smallthorn.org. Yeah, and we just wanted to finish our service this morning by playing a song that we've played before in our digital services. It's a song recorded by Kirsty, Dan and Richard. Uh, they recorded it last year. We put it out on Facebook. It had lots of views, actually hundreds of views on social media. It's a great song. It's called Here Again. So we hope you'll enjoy it and join us soon on the Zoom catch-up if you can. Yeah, so God bless you all. God bless you. And see you next week. See you next week. God bless. Can go back to the beginning Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be I'm not in Unless you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Will you meet me here again? So you are, will you be?
enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want